Okay, thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the um, Legal Affairs Committee. I'd like to let's start by calling to order uh, Legal Affairs. And um, I'd like to, am I doing that right? Why did that sound so weird? Okay, thank you. Um, also, call to order Committee of the Whole. Okay. I think I missed the gavel. That's where that It's went. in the drawer. You can. Oh, okay, next time. Tomorrow, because we'll be here tomorrow too. Okay, so. Um, just to, as a reminder for people, um, the public who may be watching on BevCam, and thank you to BevCam for being here with us and bringing this to you live. Um, the Legal Affairs Committee, it consists of myself, Councilor Rand, I'm the chair, we have Councilor Rotundo, and also Councilor Sweeney. And then the rest of our, my fellow counselors who have joined us make up the Committee of the Whole. Um, Okay, so we are here this evening to basically tackle the recommendations that came out of the Charter Review Committee. Um, the, our city charter is reviewed every 10 years. So this, was, this process was, began in 2020, and as you can imagine, fell a little bit behind. So here we are sort of in the final um, two-thirds of the process. Tonight we will be going section by section or article by article through the charter with the legal affairs committee and the committee of the whole to um, discuss and vote on the recommendations that came out of the charter committee the charter review committee um, Throughout this process, if there are questions from the Legal Affairs Committee, we'll take those first and then go out to the Committee of the Whole for um, questions beyond the Legal Affairs Committee. I want to just sort of remind ourselves and also um, remind anyone who's watching through BevCam that where we are in this process is that um, we are discussing and voting to adopt or amend or not adopt the recommendations that came out of the Charter Review Committee. Um, those uh, recommendations will then become part of a home rule petition to amend the city charter upon signature by the mayor. Um, and changes that impact the composition or terms of key elected officials would go would eventually go from the home rule petition to a vote by the people on ballot at the next municipal election for final approval okay all right here we go so i just want to make sure legal affairs committee you have your the charter in front of you will i'll be referring to um articles and sections rather than page numbers so that hopefully keeps us all on the same page but not by number okay <laughs> just metaphorically speaking um, and as we go i'll try to highlight and we can work together as a team along with our um, um, consultant from the Collins Center, Ms. Contreras is here, and Solicitor Williams is here to sort of identify areas that might require kind of a trickier vote or input and discussion. Um, to start, I actually would like kind of to kick off our discussion. I, I, as I was going through the charter and sort of thinking about our role, I also was kind of thinking about um, what role or what um, kind of what experience our solicitor's office has had in um, in relation to this this process, both what we're looking at and what will happen in the next couple months or a month with the charter review process. So, Solicitor Williams, if you would like to just share with us your experience, I think that would be a nice way for us to kind of gain a better understanding of where this came from and where it's going. Sure, thank you and good evening. Um, so the Charter Review Committee, as I believe you know, is a standing committee that was appointed by the City Council. That's provided for in our charter. So it's entirely within the purview of the City Council to select the individuals on the committee and then it's within the prerogative of the committee 
to review the charter and identify any changes that are necessary or desirable and then make a recommendation to the city council. Um, the charter review committee retain the Collins Center um, who are consultants and do this throughout the state. Um, they've been a great resource to the committee and really have sort of, I don't wanna speak <laughs> necessarily for Marilyn, um, but my perception is um, they've been instrumental in trying to help the committee navigate the process and um, the solicitor's office sort of by design has, has really not played a central role in the process. Um, the law department was not tasked or asked to identify provisions of the charter that it would be desirable to change um, or to propose amended language. Um, that primarily was a dialogue that happened between the Collins Center and the Charter Committee, which is what the charter contemplates. Um, the law department did attend most of the meetings and on occasion there were times where perhaps I would comment on if you're gonna make that change, have you considered or what would the impact be on perhaps a different section of the charter? Um, since the draft was generated with the amendments by the Collins Center, I have read through it and I've been working with um, Ms. Contreras to sort of fix some of the redlining and there are a couple of additional changes that we both at appropriate points will point out that we think need to be made just to clarify the language. Um, so the law department played no role in the policy decisions or the decisions about what needed to be changed or what might be desirable. Um, it is my view, now subject to conversations I may have with all of you or the full council that what is proposed in the charter can, is within the legal authority. The amendments that are proposed are within the legal authority of the city to propose. Uh, once a home rule petition is approved by the city council and the mayor, then um, the law department would work with our state um, representative and senator as we do on other home rule petitions to organize the actual filing. Um, it's basically just a communi an official communication with certified vote uh, from the city clerk and then coordinating with those offices around it being filed, when it's going to committee, um, any possible editorial changes, you know, that might the, the Senate or the Re House of Representatives might want to make. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Okay, thank you. Um, Legal Affairs Committee, do you have any questions based on what um, the information you just presented with? No? Okay, good. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do this evening if we can, you know, this is all kind of a work in progress and, I, you know, we're, we've all been really flexible with scheduling, but what I'd like to do is work through, review articles one, two, parts of three, um, unless the Legal Affairs Committee feels it's prepared to uh, discuss article eight, section 15 then there's one section in, in three that I'd like to skip because it refers directly to 815. Did you follow that? I do. Okay, excellent. Um, so that leaves us with one, two parts of three, article three. Um, and I'd like to, if we can, and if we're working well and moving along, I'd like to, to tackle articles five and even six. Um, that, might be um, optimistic, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Do you have questions about the work in front of us this evening? Questions from other council members? Okay, excellent. So let's do this. Um, so article one, uh, and so when, when I'm looking at these, I, um, I think you know any anything that comes up for you is fine. I I think that tackling the um, sort of the the meat of the article is probably more of our focus than the um, you know the punctuation. But you know that's just my take on it. Also, I'd like to recognize Chairman Flaherty is here. Thank you for being here. 
Okay. So Article 1 is entitled Incorporation, Short Title, and Definitions. I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just start with questions or comments about any changes that are proposed in Article 1. Uh, and then if we don't have any, we'll take it out to the the rest of the council. Um, I would say that I can just flag the major changes in the major addition is in section 17 definitions, which does add um, a couple of necessary things like defining city website, it adds a definition to the department head, and also the word district, which is a reference to a change in Article 4. Um. I'm good. Councilor Sweeney. Uh, thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. I'll just comment <laughs> first. It seems as though most of these changes are technical, refreshing the language of the charter, modernizing uh, the addition of the website, which we now use much more frequently than we did 20 years ago. Um, one question I have, uh, and you mentioned it, Madam Chair, about the inclusion of district as a definition, and this is kind of a general question, given that there's a lot of references in the charter to <coughs> items that may be included, may not be included, depending on either the discretion of the council or the will of the voters. Um, with the specific reference to district, if the additional school committee members are added, that's where this reference is necessary. But if they're not, then presumably this reference would be no longer necessary. So the question I have for Ms. Williams is, as we're going through in the subcommittee process here and then uh, later for considering these sections uh, as the council as a whole, how do we approach sections like this that a reference throughout a whole handful of parts of the charter uh, with regards to some of the more notable items such as the additional members of the school committee great question I was just asking that question earlier to um, solicitor Williams um, yes the the any any provision of the charter that is affected by any of the questions would be removed because okay. it would be of no effect. You can't, the, 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 the definition is meaningless if you don't have district me members. And that's why district is defined this way, to refer only to the school <coughs> committee. Mm -hmm. So in case it comes up in another context, like regional planning district, it doesn't apply. <laughs> okay, uh, to, so just to clarify that, District members are not ultimately added. There's nothing that we need to do proactively to remove this section as it's, or this piece of the section as it's no, no longer No, no, we'll have, we'll have a general provision in, this, in the special act that identifies those sections that will be of no effect if the questions don't pass. It will say it takes effect, but if the question passes, but not otherwise. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's it for me, Madam Chair, thanks. Questions from Committee Wheel Hall? Okay. Well, our first one is, seems smooth sailing. <laughs> okay. Whew. So I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 1 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, a motion passes. Okay. So moving on to Article 2, which is entitled the Legislative Branch. I'd like to highlight just as you're, you're looking at this, and this one is a bit, you know what, this one's a bit longer of an article, so let's do this. Let's take each section. Um, so Section 2-1 is compos entitled Composition and Term <coughs> of Office. Um, I'll just highlight for viewers. Um, that one of the one of the things that the um, Charter Review Committee recommended and what it accomplishes, what their report accomplishes, is to sort of um, unify some of the language, updating language, like the spelling of counselor is 
is um, changed and also kept consistent throughout the document as some of their recommended edits. Um, so any questions, um, so in 2-1. I'd like to make one, as we're looking at 2-1, since I heard nothing from our Legal Affairs Committee, I just wanted to make the note that um, in section 2-1C, there is a proposed change to, um, to change, it's entitled, the section C is entitled eligibility. And so there is a proposed change that if a counselor uh, move from the ward within a certain time, within the first 18 months of the term, um, that that counselor, that ward counselor, may continue to serve the balance of the term. So that's a, that's a change. And I want to also just make the comment that the, rec the recommendation from the Charter Review Committee is that this, that language would actually be included as a referendum because it is a change. So if we approve that, that would be one of the things that would be going on a referendum. And Ms. Contreras, please jump in and wave at me if I get anything wrong, or if, I, if you see a good space to you know, add to our knowledge here. Um, and that's because it, that refers to filling vacancies um, and as for the elected bodies. Okay, so any questions in section 2-1 from Legal Affairs? Council Rotunda. Just for clarification, so this will be our first referendum that we would consider going forward part of it. Yes, it is. So we'll yeah. kind of, just to keep track, I guess. Keep Exciting. Score of yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's keep score. I like that. <laughs> Councilor Sweeney? I hope we win. Yes. Anything um, in 2-1? No, nothing for me, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And how about questions from counselors? Councilor St. Hilaire. I guess I just had a question related to that about may continue to serve. That suggests there's a choice, and I'm just curious whose choice that is. Is that how does that work? Great question. That sounds like a, a legal kind of a legal question of like the difference between may and, and shall, maybe. Um, Ms. Contreras or Solicitor Williams, I don't know if you can help us with that language. Is that too If they decide nebulous? to continue to serve or? <laughs> yeah, I think it's the counselor's yeah. choice. It's the counselor's our, choice. Our, our point of view is that it, it's the counselor's choice. You can they can't be compelled to continue to serve, but if they choose to, it's an option. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Osborne. If that is the intent, <clears throat> would it not make sense to be more clear and eliminate an ambiguity to indicate that the counselor may and insert at the counselor's election, comma, continue to serve so that there's never any future dispute over the intended language. Thank you for the question. Um, Ms. Contreras, can you maybe offer some insight on how that might compare to other, how other communities handle this type of, of uh, language? Um, the language before you is, the language before you is, is standard in most other charters. Um, and, um, the question, the ambiguity question exists in all of them, I guess, because it does say, just says counselor may continue. Okay, thank you. Follow up? Yeah, it, it just seems to me that just because it, the ambiguity exists in other places doesn't mean that we have to retain the ambiguity ourselves and okay. that there's a distinct advantage for the city to remove that ambiguity. That seems to me to be part of the point of the process we're going through of eliminating ambiguities where we have the opportunity to do so. Um, so it would seem to me to make sense to do that, to eliminate the ambiguity. Thank you. Would you say the counselor, the counselor may as the, as the, the, the at, counselor at shall election. continue as the counselor may determine? 
Pardon? As the counselor may determine. Yeah, the specific, yes, that's fine. Okay. As long as it's clear that the election is at the, <clears throat> is the counselor's election. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. You know, it, you know, the counselor may. To use yeah. the word election when we're talking about elections is always a little, <laughs> yeah, you know, word, trying to just find another word. word. Option, option or, yeah, okay. or determination. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the comment. Councilor Bowen. Thank you. And just to clarify, because I know it, it can be difficult in flipping back and forth between all the different documents and what we have in front of us is the proposed new language, but not necessarily with the strikeouts of, of previous language. But this in the current charter says it splits the term and says if a ward councilor moves to another part of the city in the first 18 months, it's considered a vacancy. However, if they move to a different um, part of the city, after the first 18 months of the term, such counselor may continue to serve. So our suggestion was that we apply that standard to the whole term. And so I think the language was just using our, our existing charter language and trying to just streamline and clarify that it wasn't that before and after 18 months period. Thank you. So valuable to have you here since you served on that committee. Um, I believe I saw um, Councilor Feldman next. Um, Thank you. Um, I, in terms of the word may, I, I feel like since it, it's implicit in the word may that it is a choice um, and even asking the question shows that who else's choice would it really be if it's the counselor may, that's how it's worded. So I feel like the language is without adding anything else is perfectly to, to me, from my reading of it, clear. And to that end, as far as I know, any one of us could at any point in time to decide to vacate our position. And it's, it's always our choice. So I just feel like that's all of the, if, if a vacancy is created for any, it's n nobody's forcing anyone to serve <laughs> the city. So I feel like the choice is implied in the the wording as is, but that's just my my read on it, um, as whose choice it may be. Thank you for that input. And then um, President Flowers. Thank you. I'll be really brief because Councillor Feldman sort of anticipated what I was going to say, which is just I'm not opposed to adding a clarifying piece of language, but the way I read it was exactly that, that it's the charter giving um, permission for a councillor to continue to serve, as Councillor Bowen said, picking up that language for the whole term, but also contemplating the same fact that at any time, any counselor could choose to vacate a seat. This is just allowing that they may continue to serve in this moment. Thank you. Um, counselor St. Hilaire, and then I'll go back to the committee. Thank you. So I assume if they choose not to continue to serve, then there would be a special election or however it would be filled through section 211, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, that's the intent, okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Sweeney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So building off of that, to continue to clarify this piece, if, if the council were to move within the city, it would not be considered a vacancy under the parameters of Section 2.1. They would be allowed to continue through the remainder of their term if they so choose, if they, only if they vacate the office, they decide they no longer want to continue to serve, then would the method of replacement outlined in section 211 take place okay thank you for that clarification okay um legal affairs committee do you is there a motion let's let's take section since this is a, a thicker section let's do each a thicker article let's t take each section at a time so can I motion to keep the language as is with the May and it's not having to add the additional language. We're keeping as the document reads now with the strikeout, but the May not being removed. You may motion Thank that. You. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. So Article 2, Section 1 has been approved as recommended by the by the um, Charter Review Committee. Okay, section 2-2 .2 deals with the council president. Madam President and Chairperson, 
I'm good with this section from my angle. I think it gave its pros and cons to it, but the way it currently is done seems to be working for us. Okay. Comments or questions <coughs> from Councillor Sweeney? Yeah, um, just a comment. I know this was a matter explored by the committee, and I appreciate that Beverly is unique, and I think it's beneficial to our city the way we have structured the direct say that the voters have in choosing the council president. So I'm glad that the recommendation stayed as is. You're willing to continue in that competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that spirit. Uh, there you go. It's good. It is a, it's really, it's a unique aspect of our elections. So, um, okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve as is. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That completes, um, we've adopted or voted to adopt the recommendations by the Charter Review Committee for Section 2-2. Dash two dash two. Section 2-3, two Prohibitions. Looks like there were actually no changes except for the, uh, the numbering. So we can move along from that. Section 2-4. Very few changes there. Any questions on 2-4? We'll take these couple in a row. Okay, I hope you guys can follow my, my Piscean way of thinking here, okay? All right, section 2-5, general powers. Questions from the committee? Okay, so let's make a motion for section 2-3, 2-4, and 2-5. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the, with the mo we should probably be really clear, though. The motion was to adopt <laughs> the recommendations of the um, committee. Excellent. Mm -hmm. you second. Yeah, yeah, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Section two six: Exercise of powers, quorum, and rules. Questions or comments on 2-6? Um, and any questions or comments from the committee as a whole? No, okay. I would accept a motion for section 2-6. Motion to accept. Second. Okay, fini yeah, fini motion to accept, Except sorry, the, finish that. Um, Chatter Committee's recommendations. Excellent. So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So 2-6 has been voted on. Um, whew, okay, 2-7, access to information. No changes except for the lettering. So let's, um, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 2, Section 7, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Section 2.8, officers elected by City Council. Um, so this is kind of an interesting section for us where it actually out this section outlines how we or the fact that the city council can select the budget analysts as needed um, questions from the legal affairs committee council rotundo are we just taking um section a right now in this particular uh, not section a section 28a on yeah, this yeah we can do that do want to yeah let's do that so we're looking at section 28a Councilor Tunnel. This is just a pretty much elaborating off of the original charter when it was created back in 1995. The budget analyst position was proposed but not hired at the time, if I understand it correctly. This now just gives more language updating it to what the current role is. I'm good then. Thank You're you. You're good. Councilor Sweeney, any questions or comments? No. No I'm questions. Eight, about a. Okay. Councilor St. Hilaire. I guess, um, do we know if Jerry Perry was involved in crafting this at all? or? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Chairman Flaherty, would you like to comment on this as well? Okay. And Solicitor Williams, I'm sorry, I saw you. Yeah, so uh, there is one sentence, and I was just, just consulted with Marilyn on this. Uh, it is in 28A, uh, 
believe the second full paragraph, um, there's an addition of a sentence that states, the budget management analyst shall have those duties and responsibilities as determined by ordinance. Um, I just wanna point out that that effectively that sentence already exists uh, if you jump ahead. So this is the it, last yeah. sentence. Okay. Budget, man and budget management analysts shall have such powers and duties as may be provided by charter, by ordinance, or by other vote of the council. So I think that that additional sentence is redundant and you don't need it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, are you ready? So. <laughs> I would accept a motion from Council Rotundo here. Motion to remove that budget management analyst redundant sentence away from it, but okay. accept the rest of the uh, recommendations of the Charter Review, review Committee. Excellent. Review committee Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. So 28A has been accepted as amended. And let's look at 28B, which uh, deals with the city clerk. Questions under 28B. So um, what, what I see as the main changes here are some kind of housekeeping things, adding some language about employee, like just using the, the term employees and offices, but also changing the term for the clerk of the council and um, the city clerk from a two to three year term. Okay, if there are no more questions, we could, I would accept a motion on section 28B. Um, and I'm sorry, are we, I kind of went ahead, are we okay with looking at two, the basically the remainder of 28? Yep. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I would, I would accept a motion to Adopt the recommended changes to Article 2, Section 8, B through E. So moved. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. It's a bit clunky, but we're moving forward. Okay. Section 2, 9, Ordinances and Other Measures. So we kind of get to the, um, the meat of the recommendations under um, 2.9.C is where the, the main changes are. So this, is, this, this section refers to the publication of proposed ordinances, appropriations, or loan authorizations. Solicitor Williams, thank you. Uh, so thank you. So, uh, when this uh, red line copy was generated, it did note the red lines in 29C, and, and I will be the first to say that I think it is difficult to follow as redlined. Um, others may disagree. But um, what Ms. Contreras and I discussed, and we think is probably the best approach, is to have the amendment basically just say, strike the paragraph as it is, and then rewrite it anew. And, and it was redlined that way because much of the paragraph will remain intact, but it's so chopped up the way it's redlined. I think it's very difficult for the reader to follow what's actually being changed. Um, I can give you a copy of what it would look like just clean for tonight. I, I Unfortunately, I don't have enough for everybody, so I could bring it tomorrow night and, or give it to you for tomorrow morning and you could vote on it tomorrow night if that would be easier. It's up okay. to you. But that, I can show you it now if you want. Yeah, and just, I guess, a, a clarification question. It doesn't sound like the content is, or the meaning has changed. It's no, just No, it's just the way it's presented. Yeah. So instead of trying to redline the existing paragraph, yeah which I think is difficult to follow and difficult, even more difficult to articulate in special legislation. Yes. <laughs> my suggestion would be to strike it. Okay. And then write the paragraph again. But it's the same changes that were approved by the committee. Okay. 
And if it would be easier for you to see it tomorrow clean, we can have a copy ready for tomorrow night. It's up to you what you want to do. Okay. Thank you. Council Rotundo. I mean, if <clears throat> the, really the gist of the paragraphs are saying it's just clean look, and it's from the recommendation of the uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. Councilor Sweeney. So the question is whether we want to vote on this now or wait until we see yeah. the... I'm, comfortable voting okay uh, I don't know how we would need to structure that motion yeah I, before, maybe but. perhaps if I may Sorry. maybe it makes sense for me just to read the paragraph that you would be voting to approve or I can give it to you and you can read it I you can read it that's fine with okay me. yeah so thank you. the new paragraph as proposed to be amended would read C publication every proposed ordinance appropriation order or loan authorization except emergency ordinances as provided in section 29A shall be posted and or published on the city bulletin board, city website, and in the local newspaper, and in any additional manner required by this charter or state or federal law, as well as be made available to, hold on, as well as be made available at the office of the city clerk at least 10 days before final passage. Whenever a proposed ordinance would exceed in length more than 10 column inches of ordinary newspe newspaper notice print, then in lieu of publication, the full text of the ordinance in the local newspaper, the city clerk shall prepare and cause to be published in a local newspaper a summary of the proposed ordinance, including its purpose and provisions, along with a notice stating the times and places where the text of the ordinance may be reviewed by the public. Such summary shall be subject to review by and approval by the city solicitor prior to publication in a local newspaper. Thank you for that. Um, any comments or questions now? I completely <clears throat> identify with this. This is one of the long ones that we had several months ago with an ordinance change that mm -hmm. is uh, fairly large. So I am good with the uh, language. And I believe that was one that you presented. <laughs> it right? was. <laughs> it's like a. Ten million dollar ordinance change. Yeah, I'm still paying with coins. No. <laughs> it is good to have clarification, and I love that we have, um, you know, experiences that we can relate to with some of these um, changes in ordinance um, review. Questions? No, not no. Me. Any questions from the rest of the? Yes. Thank you. Just a, a process point. Um, I think we have the clean version as what was posted on the city website um, and the red line version that we may be looking at now is a subsequent comparison i don't know what was put on the website but i i know that what you currently have is i took the clean version and i compared it to the existing charter and created this compare document so that we caught all the red lining so this document is the same as whatever originally was posted on the website in terms of content. Got it. I just, for people following along and, and for all of us to keep those, I know version control was right. mentioned in the public hearing and with, yeah. with good reason. Um, so just wanted to, yeah. to clarify that. And, and I apologize. I, I turned the page and there was one more sentence to the paragraph, if I may just add that for the record. Yes, please. Thank you. After final passage, the full text of any ordinance shall be posted on the city bulletin board and city website and steps shall be taken by the city clerk to forthwith incorporate such ordinance into the official publication of the complete city ordinances. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm comfortable putting that to a vote this evening. I would accept a motion to, um, I'm sorry, we, yeah, let's see. So I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 2-9. C, thank you, um, as read by Solicitor Williams. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we move on to 2-9D, which is reconsideration. Um, and so this, this changes some of the clerk of the city council's processes and um, any questions thank you 
Uh, there is a phrase in the first sentence subject to council rules and that can be removed. That was, that was left over from a prior version and it's no longer applicable. Uh, everything about reconsideration is in this section D. Okay, got it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so section 2-9D, um, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to article 2-9D with the amendment as suggested by Ms. Contreras to remove subject to council rules in the third line. Councilor Rand? Yes. If I may, this may be uh, semantics, but in my view, you're not actually amending what the Charter Committee recommended. In other words, the point is that that provision subject to council rules was not what they approved. Right, it was never in the original it, charter. Ah, so okay. that was that that language was in one of the provisions they were considering adopting, but yeah. what they actually voted to approve Got didn't it. include. So this should not be. It just shouldn't even be there. That's a typo, yeah. basically. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for all of your help. I think it's really it's good to have a team. So let me try that again. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 2-9D as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, what's that? <clears throat> Did I? <laughs> you would know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, and we're going to backtrack a little and make sure that we actually voted on Section 2-9A and B. Yeah. Just keep the whole, whole thing as a whole. We can. And then we just cover it all. Sure. Well, we did. We just did C and D, so I think it was just A, B. Yeah. Two, two nine A and two nine B. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article sec, Article Two, Section Nine A and B as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Section 210 is the council review of certain appointments. Any questions or comments to this section? I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes, which is really only in numbering. Uh, to Article 2-10, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, Section 211, Filling of Vacancies. Any um, comments before we look at this from Ms. Contreras? This section changed somewhat it was clarified quite a bit added some transparency I think transparency measures there, to this. there's there's issues of transparency but there is also uh, a, a, a major change in in how uh, the vacancy gets gets um, filled instead of going down the list until you find somebody um, there's a process for candidates to come forward and uh, if, if the seat is vacant and for the council to, to hear from all of them before they fill the vacancy. Thank you. So, and this also, we, we experienced a situation like this in the last couple of years. So it's, it's um, I believe that, I, I do like how this adds clarity and some transparency measures to that process. Are there questions or comments from the Legal Affairs Committee? I do have one sure. question, Madam Thank Chair. You. Uh, with specifically the subsection D, <clears throat> filling the vacancy, particularly with the 
at large seat uh, in the last six months of the term. It may not matter the wording here, but just oh, thinking. Oh, yes, it, we, we, need, we need to clarify that. Okay. We, we do need to clarify that. I'm sorry I didn't bring that up. Um, the individual who receives the highest number of votes for counselors at large and is not presently serving yeah. and, has the, and has the highest vote total among all such candidates. You have to have the highest vote total as a council of large who is not presently serving. Both of both of those criteria. So we should clarify that language yes. in this section. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can. Um, I don't have the exact language with me. Do you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I can. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to read the language in. Um, Councillor Sweeney was asking about a section here that allows for the process for filling a vacancy for the counselor, a counselor at large seat. And so um, the language that should be there is um, let me just start at the beginning of the sentence. Such vacancy for a councilor at large council seat shall be filled by the person at the next regular municipal election who is not presently serving and receives the highest number of votes for councilor at large from among the candidates for the office who are not presently serving. So that's, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. With that clarification, are there other questions on this section from Councillor St. Hilaire? Go ahead. Um, yes, you referred to a process where candidates could come forward and you know, be interviewed by the council. Was there language specific to that in here, or, or where is that process? Section C. Section C. Section 211, okay. 211C. Yeah. Did you, were you able to find it? Yeah, I've, I've got it. I guess my only comment is having gone through that process, perhaps there could be some greater clarification on that. But, you know, I think that's... It's pretty clear, so I guess there's discretion in how that process plays out. Well, it does have a time frame anyway, you know, in terms of, of guaranteeing that it's posted for 14 days. Yeah, okay. So I I, we're trying to, you know, create some parameters for the process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council or legal affairs? Okay. Let me make sure, so we have, this is all under 211. Okay, so I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 2-11, filling of vacancies as proposed by the Charter Review Committee and as, um, is that, I don't know if that's an amendment, is that, okay, and as amended. Um, with the language to include um, basically um, clarification around the, the at-large seat being open that I read. <laughs> you with me? I'm, I'm <laughs> Okay. <sentence>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of words, a lot of red lines. I so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We got that. Okay, we're going to tackle a little bit of Article 3 here. So Article 3 is titled the Executive Branch. Let's see. Um, as we look at this section, would, I don't know if Ms. Contreras, probably you're the best one to answer. Can you talk a little bit about the chief procurement language that comes up in this section or is removed? from this section? This was a discussion of the, of the committee. Um, this is um, found in a few charters, but not very many. And of a couple that 
it does appear in, they're very old. Um, for example, it, I think Somerville's Charter is 1899. Um, I think that the purchasing piece was amended in 1932, but don't quote me on that. Um, so, it, and I remember having the conversation with the group that this is an institutional responsibility of, of any, um, any administration and that it is highly regulated by the state in terms of Chapter 30B. And Chapter 30B does allow delegation by the mayor to an individual to handle the day-to-day -day responsibilities. But in terms of continuity between, in, between administrations, maybe it doesn't belong as a as duty of the, of the mayor. Do you want to add to that, Hannah? Because you, we, we had that discussion. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, yeah, my, my understanding of it and sort of where I felt comfortable in the end was understanding that the oversight of that function is absolutely already included in the executive powers described if we were to remove the specific language that was very detailed and maybe from a time when there was not an entire department and not state regulations specifying sort of who, what technical requirements a chief procurement officer has to meet on an annual basis. Um, and so it wasn't so much uh, removing of any actual power, it was a removal of redundant language that could potentially be confused with state regulations. Um, right, the, and, the and specificity of, of of the duties listed yeah. here, as as opposed to having general oversight for all administration. And I, I think, so in terms of whether it's necessary to remove the language or not, or, or just desirable, um, I guess my understanding, but maybe it's still a question, is whether if we have this level of specificity still in the charter, there could be confusion about the ability of the mayor to delegate these specific things to our actual chief procurement officer who meets those technical guidelines. Is that well? I think I, I think in terms of if if you've signed, if the city signs um, the the delegation uh, in terms as it's described in 30B, that would override your charter anyway because. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the insight to the discussions of the Charter Review Committee. Um, I would also, in this section, I also want to point out it would be um, another major change that would be up for refer referendum, uh, which would be the change in term of office for the mayor to go from a two-year term to a four-year term. Um, any um, questions or comments from the Legal Affairs Committee on let me be specific here. Let's let's start with section three one, which is mayor qualifications term of office. So section three one, and that, like I said, that really changes. The major change is from a two to a four year term. Comments or questions from legal affairs? I guess, uh, Madam Chair, just a quick comment. I would assume that this would warrant further discussion among the council of the whole after it is recommended out of subcommittee and that the that would be the appropriate form for discussing the merits of whether or not we should be putting forth such a change in front of the voters as opposed to right now in the subcommittee review i think now is appropriate i think <clears throat> our recommendations are the foundation to that discussion and since we have a committee of the whole here and it's posted and um, we're live i, mm -hmm. I think Say, say what you would like to say at this meeting about the, a change in four-year term. I think that's important. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess I will kick us off then. Yeah, that's <laughs> let's do it. Sure. Um, for me, because this is a matter that would ultimately be approved by the voters, I am comfortable making the recommendation. I know Mr. Perry, uh, members of the Charter Committee, reviewed this matter pretty extensively and have noted that many municipalities in recent years have moved from a two to four year term and that there are 
I believe, none that have gone in the reverse direction from a four-year term to a two-year term. And given that it was both recommended by the committee and would need to still be approved by the voters, I am comfortable in voting to approve this section as presented by the committee so that it can be voted on uh, by the voters at the coming municipal election. Thank you. Councilor Rotundo, anything to add? I don't. I think uh, Councilor um, Sweeney said it best, and I don't need to uh, elaborate on it. Okay. Thank you. All right. And out to the full council. Councilor Houseman. Yeah, I, I agree with the rationale um, stated by, by Councilor Sweeney, but I would be interested, and I think it would be appropriate for the council to to, to air some of their thoughts on this um, from their own point of view, and I guess I will, I will kick that mm -hmm. off. Um, the hearing what other what other municipalities have done um, is uh, useful to a degree for me, but not in and of itself uh, wholly persuasive because every community has its own charter, every community has its own character. Uh, we've talked about what are you know, certain aspects that are unique to Beverly. And so I think those should be considered by the council uh, as, as we think about it as counselors, not necessarily what we might advocate you know, in the general public. Um, and I suppose the one thing that, that I, I suppose there are two things that particularly strike me about whether to favor a four-year term versus a two-year term. Um, so so I'll, I'll mention the two, the two uh, matters. One is the power of incumbency, and the other is the distribution of power between the council and the, and the mayor. So uh, I'd be interested in hearing um, from Ms. Gutierrez and, and members of the, of the, of the committee um, if they would uh, articulate the rationale behind why a four-year term um, would be useful and helpful to the city, given that in our history, uh, certainly my time of history in the, in the city, um, with one exception, we have had, uh, we have had mayors for whom the power of incumbency has been really, really powerful. Um, I don't know the number of terms Mayor Scanlon served, but I think he served something, something in the order of 20 years. Um, Mayor Cahill has now served, I think, eight years, going on 10. Um, and I think that speaks to um, the power of the incumbency, um, which might tend to suggest that a rationale that a mayor needs four years to organize his or her, her administration to, to, to lay out their agenda is not really so, um, so necessary or so persuasive a need as to, as to counter the question if a mistake was made in a selection of a mayor where having a two-year term would be beneficial to the city. And we've also experienced that, um, which is the exception to the two mayors who have served for very long, very long periods of time. So my concern really has to do with the ability of the voters to have accountability in the office in a, in, in a manner that's timely enough uh, to, to address the situation. I recognize, and I know we'll have a discussion about the ability to have a recall of the mayor, and I know that's that's part of this discussion, but I'll set that aside for the moment. The other point that um, is of interest to me is, is if you will, the balance of the respective roles and, and authority and power between the the mayor and the and the and the city council. Um, I think that. Most people would agree that if you make the mayor's term a four-year term, it certainly 
redistributes the balance of power between the council and the mayor in the sense that the mayor um, uh, will have uh, greater longevity compared to uh, two-year elections by city councilors. We already have a strong mayor, weak council form of government, um, and councilors, um, uh, with the exception of the budget analyst, don't, don't have their own staff. Uh, they're, we're part-time. Uh, by and large, we have full-time jobs. And so, the, um, which m meaning that we're part-time and we're squeezing what we do in, um, you know, on, on the side, if you will. So that if the mayor's office were to go to a four-year term, and I, I recognize there are, you know, reasonable arguments in favor of that, I think that one of the things I l am interested in and concerned about in terms of redoing the charter is whether there's any redistribution um, of, of resources or, or, or power on the bar, part of the council to, um, to match, if you will, or to, to provide equilibrium, maybe is a better word, for an increase in the, the power of the mayor's office. So I'll just put those two out there for, for discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Chairman Flaherty, did you have any, did that spark any mm -hmm. comments from you, given your experience both as a counselor and your role in the um, Charter Review Committee? Uh, certainly. Um, in 1995, when I was on the Charter um, Committee that was elected, um, different than we're doing now, um, the committee looked at the four-year term, but the idea then is they were, it was it's kind of like it is now, although there are a lot more cities and towns that have gone to a four-year term uh, in the last 25 years. Um, the idea is it was a little controversial, and they didn't want to throw the whole charter out when we, the difference between 1995 and before is a major difference here. What we're doing is we're just fine-tuning it. So the idea, we did look at it. You make some, you make some valid points. Um, I think the idea is trying to keep the politics out of it as most as possible. I mean, you can always make argument that <laughs> if it's two or four years, there's always politics involved. But the idea of having a four-year term you know, and keep who the, the, the current mayor is or who the past mayor is, hopefully attracting um, not just one but several candidates to choose from. Um, and it is true that you know people aren't as voting as much and people are busier there than they have been before, that the idea of every four years would get a, would get a better turnout to have people elected and also having um, him or her who is mayor, the idea of focusing on the job and not every year and a half year um, looking for, for re-election. Um, I, and I know what you said, Council, about the idea of um, uh, the, the strong mayor versus weak mayor. It, it, you know, if you really look at it, it depends who the council is, right? It, it, it's up to the council to decide to bring people in, to, to question the mayor. Um, you can always say the executive branches, and that's why we changed to that in 1995, is because in 1995, you want, uh, before that, we had a huge deficit, and that's kind of what brought this whole charter change about, is the idea of trying to clarify what's the role of a legislative branch. Because before, and sometimes I think he's a council, and you know, when I was on before, sometimes it gets confusing. What's the role of the legislative branch? The legislative branch shouldn't be involved in the executive functions, and, the, and vice versa. The executive shouldn't be involved in the legislative functions. So I, to me, um, I understand of the strong mayor, weak mayor, but it's the idea of trying to, um, it depends on who the council is and how strong as a, as a, as a as a, as a body of the whole, um, how strong that council is. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we, uh, that we had talked about. So we did go back and forth on the, on the two to the four. We just felt, um, again, attracting a better for consistency, longer term. And it is true. Um, I know you talked about the idea of um, we shouldn't worry about what other city towns do. But sometimes I think it's a good idea to do that because some, you can look to other cities and towns whether they've been successful doing that or not been successful. And um, what we've seen for the research we did, um, Hannah, uh, Councillor, if you could, uh, you know, might disagree or maybe agree, but the idea of we saw the majority, and based on some of the um, help um, from Maryland, the idea of majority um, have been successful. And that's kind of why we 
um, went in that direction. Thank you. I Thanks think I got most insight. of it. Appreciate that. Um, any other questions or comments from councillors? Yeah. Uh, one question, Madam Chair, and this could either be answered by you, Chairman Flaherty, or Councillor Bowen. I know that some of the proposals presented by the committee, the committee was not in unison in recommending the proposals. They were split votes. Uh, was Do you have record of or recall what the vote was for this particular proposal? I don't recall the, the, um, the actual vote, um, but I, it might have been one or two maybe um, that were, were uh, against. But I do believe, I think everybody voted to get it out because the idea of putting it before the voters, there's mm -hmm. enough talk out there. And um, Council Hollisman makes some, you make some, again, make some valid points. Going back, I think it's like 100% feeling comfortable the four year or the two year but I think everybody felt comfortable bringing it to the voters because it's been talked about for the last 25 years. Other cities and towns are doing it. Is it, is it right? Can we let, this is something big that we really think that the, the voters, and at the end of the day, the voters might turn around and say, you know, I want to stick with the two year mm -hmm. um, term and we're comfortable with that. Great point, thank you. Councilor Bowen. Thank you, and you know, I was, I we can go back to the minutes and check, but I was thinking of the same thing because it really, it's one of the topics that we discussed a lot, and I heard members of the original Charter Commission sort of go back and forth on. I myself went back and forth several times, and I think I'm still sort of feeling like this is an area of the Charter where there really are great arguments for either way, and neither one feels like it's going to jeopardize the city's future because we have seen other examples on the North Shore that are really successful with a four-year term, and the work of being the full-time mayor is very complex. It involves a lot of hiring and managing people, long-term planning, and, and things that really don't play out in, in those first couple of years. And I think one of the strongest arguments made was, you know, if you're someone who is thinking about running for mayor and you know that you have to leave everything else to go and do that for two years and don't have any, like, runway in which to start getting things going before you're already campaigning again on basically your first year's performance that it might not give the voters actually as much room to hold you accountable for what you want to do as a four-year term might. Um, other factors that we toyed with, um, I think when we get to Article 7 or so, uh, making the recall provision appropriate to the length of the term so that it's never super easy to recall a mayor, but is achievable if two years into a term there's something going really wrong. Um, there can be that additional accountability. Um, we also talked about term limits several times, which I'm a fan of, but the committee really was, was not, and I, you know, I understand those reasons too, so you don't see any recommendations for that in the, um, in the committee report. Um, and I think, you know, it's, something that I feel like addresses the incumbency issue that Councillor Houseman raised, but there are other ways of addressing that as well. So I um, didn't feel like that was like a sticking point. Um, so I, I felt like from the discussions, you know, really comfortable with the four-year term for its positives and felt like the negatives that have been clearly identified didn't outweigh the negatives of a two-year term necessarily and that we had some safeguards in there. Um, and I think um, to Chairman Flaherty's point, there are safeguards in the charter, and so it's also a matter of making sure that they are sort of used when needed um, more than necessarily like changing them. Um, so things like the, you know, everything in, in Article 2 is certainly part of that balance of power. Um, and then, you know, as we talked about last week, some of the transparency pieces that come along with budgeting and the audit. To me, those were safeguards that seemed important, um, but the, the length of the term doesn't really change those too substantially in my mind. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilor St. Hilaire. Yeah, i just say I think there are benefits to, to both, and I'm trying to keep you know, my thoughts about, you know, where's the line of balance. I think I, I share a lot of the concerns Councilor Houseman articulated and, you know, I, I don't think it's political in terms of current politics, but I think there are, there is politics at play. And, and when I look at this, um, 
you know, what other cities and towns have experienced, you know, incumbents are winning 90 plus percent of elections as is. And this, this no doubt creates incumbent, more incumbency. Um, <coughs> the balance of power, one of the things I've seen in other towns is turnout for municipal elections and off year elections when the mayor's not on the ballot plummets. Mm -hmm. And that impacts politics, right? And that's not good for our community. Um, and I've also seen, because of that, you know, mayors getting involved in, 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 in city council elections and endorsing candidates and choosing candidates that, that support their agenda. And, you know, again, I'm not saying our, our mayor would do that or anything like that, but I don't know that, you know, from a balance of power perspective, that's something I would like to see in Beverly. So, you know, those are some of the concerns. I, I've also seen executive um, administration and understand that programs and things take time to develop. but. I think a mayor needs to balance expectations too with with their constituents. So um, open-minded and, and you know appreciate hearing everyone's perspective because I think there are benefits on both sides. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other comments from councilors? Okay. Is there a motion from the Legal Affairs Committee? Motion to accept the recommendations of the Charter Review Committee. Okay. So. That's a motion to accept the recommendations of section 3-1. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, motion passes. Okay, so section 3-2 is entitled Ex Executive Powers Enforcement of, and Enforcement of Ordinances. And this we kind of, um, this is where that language for um, the mayor being the chief procurement officer was removed from the charter. Any questions or comments on section 3-2? I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended recommended changes to article 3-2 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. So, and we're gonna, so it's section 3-3, three, three, the, basically the remainder of section of Article 3 from Section 3 on, um, we are going to take up tomorrow. So the, in order to be prepared for that, you'd want to familiarize yourself and be ready to talk about Section 8, Article 8, Section 15 as well. So we are going to actually skip to um, Article 4. We are also not taking up tonight. We'll be discussing that on the 12th. My apologies, Council Rotundo. Okay. Um, after the school, that's the uh, article on the school committee. We'll be discussing that after the school committee discusses that at their uh, May 11th meeting. So if we could go to Article 5, Administrative Organization. And we'll go section by section here. So, um, I guess let's take let's take section five one first. So it's called organization of city agencies, um, and there have there was um, there are a couple of additions to this section that I believe adds some clarification and some checks and balances to process here. I didn't know. Um, Let's start off. Any questions from the Legal Affairs Committee or comments? Okay. Any questions or comments from counselors? Okay. And Ms. Contreras, is there anything here that you would like us to, that you'd like to flag for us in terms of how it's, how this section is turning out in the, um, the draft? Um, home rule petition. Um, I guess the answer is not particularly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, and in terms of the changes we made uh, in sections 5, 4, um, and, and following, they, they were meant to be both uh, address some issues that need to be clarified and update um, the 
for example, the director of municipal uh, finance can be the city accountant. Um, so I wanted to add that. Um, and I think, and, and five seven uh, personnel was, was once again, it's technical, it's clarifying. It doesn't change the intent of the provision in any way. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Bowen. Thank you. Um, from what I remember in discussing this, it, it looks like a major change to remove the option to reorganize or establish city agencies by ordinance by the city council. And I guess technically in some ways it might be, but in reality, the reflection of what's proposed is just to have that clarity that the executive powers, including sort of what departments do what and who's in them sits with the mayor and that leaving this provision in um, maybe opened the door for just confusion and running into problems with state law. So it was sort of actually more of a housekeeping change than a policy change. Um, but I just want to confirm that that's how I'm remembering things yes, correctly. And, and keep in mind that the administrative code is proposed by the mayor, but it has to be adopted by the council in order to take effect. So. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is put the person who is responsible for making sure that you have the organization, the resources, uh, the priorities in order, and then, but as far as adopting the code itself, that's, that's the role of the council. Thank you. Good point. Any other questions or comments by legal affairs or the council? Okay. So let's, let's take this section by section, okay? Um, all right, so I would accept the motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5-1 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, okay, I would accept the motion to uh, adopt the recommended changes to Article 5-2 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I actually have a question in Section 5-3. I think it's a typo, but I don't know if... Um, um, in 5-3-A, <laughs> does it say... So where, where the text reads shall include oh, treasury just, collection um, that's just a formatting problem okay um, excuse me that's just a formatting problem section 54 should be its own line oh got it okay nice, nice yep step. all right excellent so then we start to talk about section 54 then a b and c so that that that's just like i said a formatting within Which, a is that is the word which extra? <laughs> I know it's small. And you guys have probably already caught that in your, in your draft. Shall include treasury collection, accounting, assessing, and procurement. Well, it's meant to municipal finance activities, which shall include, it's meant to further define municipal, municipal finance plans. activities. Oh, well. Second which. Yeah, the second witch. <laughs> it's small. Oh, okay. I know. It's so small, but I did circle oh, it. I think so. it is a dupe. I think it's a typo. Oh, I have it crossed out. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Okay. You are, the I the figured, second witch. It's I figured gone. you were already on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5.3 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Oops, five four. Sorry. Okay, um, I would accept a motion to recommend to adopt the recommended changes to Article five four, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, that's five four. Okay, Section five five. Any questions or comments? Okay, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5, Section 5, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. 
Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And section five six. Questions or comments from the committee? Do you have a question? No? I mean, it's it's just a fun fact that sure. this is, we've just seen a couple of appointments for this committee and now know its function. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's a living document, isn't it? Okay, so I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5.6 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, Section 5.7. Questions or comments from the committee? Okay, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5.7 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Section 5.8. Questions or comments? Okay. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 5, Section 8, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Councillor Houseman? Yeah, I just have a clarification on my red line copy for 5.8. Sure. There is a strikeout right before the uh, Section B, which says uh, in brackets, one editor's note, now the Historic District Commission. Um, is there can someone give some clarification as to what the, the nature of that strikeout represents? You're talking about where it says historic districts instead of and historical is, is struck? Is that what you're asking about? Yeah. Okay. I, the committee is called the Historic Districts Commission, so I believe that was just sort of to line up the actual name for that. Commission. Oh, I see. It's the reference to what's up above. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We already voted on 5 8, so we will. Um, okay. So, ooh, we made it to 6. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, let's take up Article 6. Um, well, first, let me check in with Legal Affairs Committee. Are you, how are you guys feeling about the pace? Good. Are your questions being, are, do you have time to bring your questions forward? Are you feeling good about this process so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, one note sure. I'll make. I don't know if Mr. Perry was planning to attend. I know he's had some family matters recently, uh, but I would be curious to hear his input if we continue on Article 6 uh, with the proposed annual budget meeting for Section 6-2. I've discussed this with him already, um, so I'm comfortable if we, for the sake of expediency, want to continue. Uh, but I would just make note that would certainly be a notable change in how we, as a council, interact with the mayor and the budget process and would appreciate his formal input on that proposal. Thank you. I think that's a great idea to get his formal input. Um, I've, I'm comfortable with taking that opportunity at a full council meeting, which hopefully mm -hmm. he can be well. with us. Or okay, excellent. How about you, Councilor yes. Tendo? Okay, and I do want to point out that so Article Six is um, entitled Finance and Fiscal Procedures, and um, the Section Six Two that Councilor Sweeney referred to adds an annual budget meeting um, section to it. Formalizes an annual budget meeting in a way that we haven't done formally in our charter before. So that is, um, I think, a positive change in addition to our charter. Um, let's see. So let's take this. Um, we'll go section by section because otherwise I lose track and I forget to vote on the first one. So <laughs> section 6-1 is just it details the fiscal year. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6-1 as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Section 6-2 is the um, portion I was talking about before, the annual budget meeting. Any questions or comments? Councilor Rotundo. I do have a question about this. I know um, I as well spoke with uh, Mr. Perry and um, 
coming into the council during the pandemic, we kind of do things a little differently anyways. But it seems as if when we have that annual meeting between school committee right now and it's codified in our, um, our ordinances, mm -hmm. it seems as if we're already doing it. And I don't know if that's something that we, I mean, we're just really kind of, we're, again, I'm looking at it from my point of view is that we're already doing that sort of procedure through our ordinances. Is it necessary to have it in the charter? Um, and that's just my only question. I understand the premise of it. I also know that um, the mayor is not really favorable of this. So maybe a possible veto on it. So I just want to kind of put that out there too. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Any other comments or questions about section 6-2? Councilor Bowen? Thank you. And I mean, I, I agree in some ways. I, I think this is a good example of something that as a committee, we talked about like what are things that are happening in the city or have happened in the last 25 years that we could codify at the charter level to make sure that they continue to happen because they have served the city well. And, and to me, I think it's a safeguard that's even more important if you make changes to the length of the mayor's term and or to the composition of the school committee that you could you know, change the dynamics between sort of who wants to have those discussions at what time and the fact that it has been serving the city well to have that degree of transparency about where all the elected officials in the city stand on budget priorities and where the, the public stands at the beginning of budget season. It's it's worth including here. And, and this might be one that um, we could refer to which other communities do this practice and who has it sort of at the ordinance level or the charter level if there are advantages there. I don't know if that's something Ms. Contreras could, could speak to, but. I, thank you. I do know it's in the charters of Pittsfield, Northampton, Newburyport, Everett. Um, those are the ones that come to mind right away. Thank All you. those charters have been adopted since 2010. Okay, thank you. Council Rotundo. Um, so, th so those are only four communities you can speak to that are actually in their charter. Well, that's on the top of my head, yes. <laughs> right, okay. So yeah. um, I guess, again, as a matter of practice, I know um, Councilor Hausman called from his committee the uh, meeting between our finance director and the mayor, which was a good policy of the city council, which was never done before, from what you're saying. So that gave us an op another opportunity to have this sort of a uh, meeting, which again speaks to when uh, Chairman Flaherty had stated that it's really the reflection of the council and how strong we want to be as a body to the you know, between the legislative branch and the executive branch. Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. And I, I just had a, a follow up about the specific language related to that, Councilor Rotundo. Um, at the end of it, it says, in order to develop a coordinated budget preparation process. And I guess my concern is. It's pretty clear, I think, in the charter that the mayor has the budget preparation authority, and I, I think that is suggesting that somehow there's some obligation to coordinate with the council on the preparation of the budget. And I just want to be clear: is that is that what the intent is, or or not? And you know, I think that language in particular, I would suggest changing at the very least. Changing the, the just in order to develop a coordinated <coughs> budget preparation process. Yes, I would take strike all of that at least. Yeah. Any, and I'm um, not sure I support the rest of it, but that, that, that <laughs> in particular concerns me. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any um, comments or kind of thoughts about that from either Ms. Contreras or Solicitor Williams? No. What I recall from the conversation is that the coordinated budget process was a sort of a, a, a question of participation to, to ensure that all the voices that wanted to participate in this process were given an opportunity to be heard. And that as a result, both the mayor and the school committee would be working together going forward to develop the budget. I mean, I know it sounds a little Thank you. Uh, fine, fine. I appreciate the clarification. Aspirational. Let's go with that. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments on that section? Councilor Bowen. Thank you. Maybe just to, to respond to that point, I think, yeah, my 
under, my recollection of developing that language was, you know, reflecting how it was described in other places and that sort of upfront participation in identifying needs and priorities was, was the core piece to me. So I think, I, I don't know that actually removing that last phrase would weaken it from the perspective of what I think this provision adds. It's sort of the fact that a meeting has to happen, um, how people use that meeting, I think is up to the people who are participating in it in a, any given year. It's the fact of like, residents can expect that that's how the process starts off with the participation of everyone who will eventually be playing a role in the in the final process so I, I think that could if it's confusing to others could probably be amended without losing what I see as the, the value there thank you legal affairs committee are we prepared to make a motion on section six two yes okay Yes, change. I do. <laughs> My apologies. It's okay. You're doing great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, motion to accept the um, Charter Commission's, I'm sorry, Charter Committee's recommendation for Section 6 2. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. S opposed? Yes. So vote passes 2 1. Um, and just to clarify, so I think, you know, this is great to have the discussion here. Any of these votes can be amended at the full council level. So that should be fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's take, uh, let's see. I'm going to actually, we're going to skip section 6.3 and come back to it on May 12th because it is more specifically geared toward only the school committee budget. And then we will skip over to section 6.4. And just so you know that this will, there will be an end in sight. Um, section 6 gets pretty heavy at the end as it does deal with the independent audit. I'd like to kind of gauge just as we're at this moment here what the appetite is for uh, moving through from the legal affairs committee for moving through the entirety of section six other than that school committee or take a couple more and break or how are you feeling Councilor sweeney can do you think we can move through all of section six at this point or yeah I don't think so, yeah. Okay, you're good? Yep. All right, let's do that. So our plan will be to work through the remainder of Article 6, and then I'll review the next two meetings and sort of which articles you'd want to be prepared to tackle at those two meetings, and then we'll adjourn. Okay, thank you. All right, here we go. So Section 6.4. And this section really deals with the submission of budget and budget message. Any questions or comments from the committee on section 6-4? Okay, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 4, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Section, okay, so Section 6-4, motion passes. Section 6.5, which is related to the budget message. Questions or comments from committee members? I would accept a motion. I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 5, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Section 6.6, 6, budget. Um, not a lot of changes here. Really just kind of, this is all laying out the process for our, our, our um, budget process. Okay, I would accept a motion to approve, to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 6, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. What's that? 
Just no, no, Matt, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> the notes back out me a little bit. Okay, yes, actually, because then we jump to 6-9. Six, nine. Six, nine. Okay, six, hold on. Okay, so now we're back. So six, section 6-7, six, action on budget. Um, questions or comments from the Legal Affairs Committee? <clears throat> Councilor Sweeney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. One quick question on subsection C. Um, Ms. Contreras, this question may be for you. The section that was removed mentioned a 60-day time frame uh, following when the budget was received and then otherwise substituted in the time frame as is provided by general law. Could you maybe specify what that time frame is in comparison to this section that was uh, stricken? 30 days. Okay, so that, because I know. Chapter 44, section 32 says by June 1st, the, governor, the, the mayor has to give you something to work with. Okay, uh, and that obviously makes sense given when the fiscal year starts and ends. Yeah. I know this may be a question for, for my fellow counselors here. It seems as though it's typical that we get the budget pretty close to that deadline and that will be the case this fiscal year is that why, given that practice, this language is requested or proposed to be amended here? Um, my understanding is that it's to agree with state law. Right. It, it, okay, as to opposed to, 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 to try to if, if you accept Chapter 44, Section 32 is uniform, which means applying to all cities, then you, this has to reflect that, the, then your provisions have to reflect that. Okay, and so I guess the short question is essentially, and I believe I have the answer, this wording change doesn't change anything, practically speaking, because of the terms dictated by state law. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Houtsman. Yes, Ms. Gutierrez, before you leave, what was the site you uh, referenced again as to the deadline when the budget has to be submitted? Uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 32. Thank you. If, if, thank you very much. If I may, um, in looking back at um, some of the previous years, I, I found it interesting, this is sort of a side note, that um, we have in the past, mostly with Mayor Scanlon, uh, received the budget uh, mid-May, uh, basically two weeks earlier than, than, um, uh, than Mayor Cahill at least this year is providing and has frequently provided in the past, which gave us more time to sort of work through the process and, and scheduling and so forth. So that's just sort of a, a uh, it's not exactly a point of trivia, but just a matter of general information, I guess. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's your function as the dean, right? <laughs> <laughs> Keeper of that. Um, okay, so let's see, so that is, Section 6-7 is what we're talking about, if I'm, yeah, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 7, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Okay, section 6-8, supplementary budgets and other appropriations. Again, this, um, this section really seems to be mostly about adding things like um, to, to say that postings will be on the city bulletin board and on the city website, so sort of modernizing or updating some of that language. Um, any questions or comments on section 6-8? Okay. I would accept a motion then to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 8, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. Section 6, 9, Capital Improvement Program. And this section also really the only change is in the lettering of the section. Any questions or comments? Okay, I would accept a motion to adopt the recommended changes to Article 6, Section 9, as proposed by the Charter Review Committee. 
So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, section 610, and this, uh, this section deals with the independent audit. Comments and questions from Legal Affairs. Council Rotundo. Madam Chair, may I make a um, suggestion in regards to the makeup of the body? Yes. Um, may we strike out the one of the appointments from the mayor, maybe the city accountant, and add the uh, representative from one of the prior land, which is a representative appointed by the city council president with um, expertise in finance, um, preferable municipal experience. I know there's a section that we were um, we have, and I would like to um, amend that. Okay. Could you just restate what, what your request is? My, requ my request is to remove the um, makeup of the current board, five members as proposed by the city charter review committee from having a finance director, the city accountant, the business manager from the school department, uh, the school, I'm sorry, the um, council finance chair, and as well as and budget analyst. Bob, budget, budget analyst yeah. to remove the city accountant from the mayor's appointment to have a city citizen representative with conditions that the representative has finance and audit experiences with preferable to having uh, municipal um, experience. And who appoints that? That would be appointed by the city council president. Sorry, thank you. Thank you for reminding me on that. Okay, Councilor Sweeney. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councilor Rotundo, for providing that amendment. Um, well, I don't think it should dictate what the council ultimately recommends. It was not lost on me during our last meeting uh, in discussion with Mr. Perry and Ms. Williams and Ms. Contreras that if the mayor were to veto any section of, or any small passage within a section that the entire section would essentially revert to the original language of the charter. Um, that being said, I guess, Councilor Rotundo, the question I would pose to you in providing this amendment, do you have any concern given the position that we've heard articulated from uh, Mr. Perry about his discussions with the mayor that in changing the compromise proposal that came out of the charter committee, we would be subjecting ourselves to such a veto potentially. Madam Chair, may I? Yes, please. Councilor um, I did speak with the mayor, particularly of this subject matter. Um, he seems to be um, amendable to allowing one of his appointments to be, now whether it's specifically the finance director of the city uh, accountant, I don't know which one he would be more amendable to. I just, I suggest the city accountant because the finance director does help really creating the budget process. Um, I could be mistaken, but that's what I got out of the conversation that I had with him today, that he is amendable to having a um, citizen representative, obviously with the qualifications. I do understand from Jerry, uh, Mr. Perry's perspective in regards to the remedial and to tutorial part um, of getting a citizen up to par, but I think that if we have someone with the experience in the city council president is able to appoint someone with that experience and having the four other members that have that I mean, they're, they're picking an audit committee that's still coming to us, and we would still have the power as a council to, you know, accept the recommendation or go further. That's not going to change regardless. This is just the makeup of the committee from, from my point. Oh, thank you, Council Rotundo. And to that point, I will quickly state more generally coming out of that discussion that we had last week, I am certainly comfortable with the language and appreciate the amendment. Uh, but more generally that we as a city council would have the ability to tailor recommendations of the audit committee, for example, if in our discretion as the council we wanted to request that the audit committee put forth a different firm than the city had been using in years past, uh, or as you alluded to, Council Rotundo, the council could ultimately um, go against the recommendation of the audit committee and have the committee start from scratch in recommending a new firm. And I know those were concerns cited by residents and others um, about their concerns with this proposal. And I appreciated the conversation that we had last week to further discuss the specifics of what this proposal could look like in practice if it were adopted. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, I, I just want to follow up with um, a comment made by Solicitor Williams last week um, that we sh should do make some changes to the first sentence. The city council, for example, the city council shall annually select um, the audit, the certified public account or, or, or firm of certified public accounts, et cetera. And I'm certainly willing to bring you a sentence tomorrow that would work for that. Thank you. Um, Chairman Flaherty, did you have comment to add to that? Uh, just a couple things. Um, a few times tonight we've talked about the mayor's veto, and I want to make sure people realize, I know the council does, but people at home realize that's not a, a city charter or an ordinance, that's done by state law. So it's the, that's why we have the mayor do that. It's basically the committee recommended to you. You guys can veto what we recommended, the same what the mayor can do. It's just basically like a, a checks and balance of making sure that it works. The state wants to make sure that the executive branch and the legislative branch are on, are on one page. Um, and just to clarify too, I mentioned this before, uh, uh, probably a month or so ago, one of the major reasons why when President Guanze asked me to be on this committee, um, obviously I had the experience of being on the council for almost 20 years and then served on the charter committee. But this was a, a big piece of why um, I decided to do that, because I wanted to see the language stronger so it would fit, it would be stronger for the city council to make that decision. Um, there was some ambiguity right now uh, and the way the, co the uh, charter is written, and I wanted to make sure it was strong and clear that the power rests with the city council. To me, that has been done, and I feel, I feel really good about it. Um, and I know there are several other councilors before have expressed the same concern, um, but I do believe, and then adding this committee um, on that. Now remember, and I know, council, you just mentioned this, but the idea of it's a committee recommendation, a budget analyst is on it, the chairman of finance and property uh, is on that, and I think the recommendation for the mayor, yes, he, he or she can veto that, um, but um, the idea of, of him, him vetoing this now uh, is not going to happen because I know you talked to him, which I think is a great thing. And just to clarify, too, during this whole process, um, people said, oh, well, you know, is, is the mayor going to veto this, and, or is there, is there, um, are you guys talking behind closed doors? Remember that was talked about? Which is kind of disturbing because Everybody in the, review, the uh, Charter Review Committee um, was part of, the, part of the meetings and all the information came forward. It was so important, I believe, as the chairman of the committee, that my, our job is to recommend something that is clear and that we, you fail with a mayor. You don't want to waste your time in, in deliberating and then saying we're going to go forward and then all of a sudden the mayor comes back with 20 vetoes. I think we did a pretty good job because you guys were involved in that um, to make sure that um, we were on one page. Necessarily didn't always disagree, but we're all on one page understanding where we, where we came from. So I just wanted to make sure that um, I said that out there, an idea, the recommendation that um, the committee make up, that's fine. I think that makes, that makes sense as long as everybody agrees to it. But the bottom line is the council um, now has, if, if voted, now has the power um, to, um, to okay that, uh, that auditing firm, which it is not right now. So I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments um, from Solicitor Williams or Ms. Contreras? Okay, so I would accept a motion. Yes? If you could recognize other counselors that are not on legal affairs. I have a uh, comment I'd like to make. And okay, on and section. I'm just going to ask, do you think it's a, I, I'd love it if we could just focus in on maybe a comment that is different from what we shared the other night. This is clearly f turning out to be, at, from our conversation the other night, sort of the more hot button thing. So if it's something, you know, on top of that, that would help shed some insight, then please, I'd love to recognize you. Thank you. So I, I, I apologize to, to Solicitor Williams. I had hoped to reach her uh, by phone uh, to walk through what I'm about to say without sort of giving her this on the fly. Um, um, so let me back up for just a minute. I, I absolutely think that the language that has been recommended is stronger than the language that the council would have if we don't make a change. Um, so I certainly 
want to make sure that whatever we do is something that is acceptable to the mayor so it's not vetoed. So I'm, I'm glad to hear from Councilor Rotundo that the suggestion that he had is something that uh, he ran by the mayor and the mayor is agreeable to. I have not had an opportunity to do that with this language. This is, uh, so what I've done is um, uh, sort of following up on the suggestion that Councilor Williams made uh, the other night uh, to the first sentence which referred to changing the word uh, provide to select mm -hmm. specifically. Um, and as I, which I was agreeable to the other night uh, as, as, as strengthening it. But after I went back and, and, and reread it um, with a chance to not try to do it on the fly, I occurred, uh, it, 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 it struck me that the language would read, the city council shall annually select for an outside audit of the books. I think, and, and her suggestion was, the city council shall annually select for an outside audit, it seems to me that if I understood her intent correctly, and I don't know that I did, that it would read more clearly if it said, the city council shall annually select an out, excuse me, the city council shall annually select an independent auditor and provide for an outside audit of the books, um, rather than select for an audit. Because what we're really trying to clarify is the selection of the auditor. Um, and so it's, it is a suggestion to insert just a few words to clarify how the word select might be used to make sure that it references an independent auditor. So uh, that, that is my suggestion. There's also a, a similar suggestion down at the bottom, which is not as important in my opinion. Um, but uh, I, I've given Solicitor Williams a, a, a quick copy of this <laughs> with, a, with an opportunity to take a look at the language and see if she finds it and thinks that the mayor would find it acceptable. It doesn't, I believe, change what the intent was of her suggestion, but strengthens and clarifies her, her language. So what's I provided this, a copy. What's the second amendment that you're referring uh, to? Yeah, I'm going to give, give a copy. I, only, okay. I don't have enough copies for all of you. The second is just uh, on the, uh, <laughs> at the bottom of the page, you'll see that it, it changes um, the word award to selection, um, and again, of the auditor as opposed to audit. So okay. it, it sort of repeats uh, the, the, tracks the same language as I'm suggesting at the beginning. So I, I'm happy to take this up Tomorrow, if that is the, the preference, I Solicitor did not want to catch Williams. Solicitor Williams sort of on the fly like this. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Councilor Hausman. Uh, so, I mean, Councilor Rand, you and I talked today a little bit about how we are still, this is a document that's, you know, we're working on during these discussions. Um, I think we're on the right track with including the word select. Um, and maybe this is the language, but I think Ms. Contreras and I would like to look at it yeah. to, before the meeting tomorrow night and make sure that if we're gonna try to uh, clarify it, let's really clarify it. And um, I think one of the things Ms. Contreras pointed out is that the, the word auditor, there actually is a city auditor that is a position within the city. So just little things like that. But I do think it's important to put the word select in. So before tomorrow night's meeting, maybe between the two of us, we can come up with something that's along these lines. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you so much. Um, so with that, we'll put that, we'll put that vote on hold and we'll start off tomorrow with section 610, right? Yes. Okay. Wow, thank you everybody. We got pretty far. Uh, so I'd like to just make sure you're prepared for, we will have another meeting tomorrow here in council chambers at 6 p.m. Again, it's a, a legal affairs committee meeting with also committee of the whole as you choose to join us or not. And we'll be prepared tomorrow to write off, we'll start off with article six, section 10. And then we will move to, um, we'll take up article eight and article three, section three. I believe that's all. I think that will be enough for tomorrow night. 
um, actually we'll also be prepared to discuss Article 9 and Ms. Contreras if tomorrow you could just sort of walk us through the transitional provisions I think that would be enlightening so thank you uh, and then on May 12th we will be prepared to discuss May 12th um, May 12th so that's Thursday right yeah, because that's after the that's school right. committee. So yeah, yeah. So well, May 12th, we'll be prepared to discuss Article 4 and Article 7. And I believe that will bring us to the end of our discussions, depending on how we move forward. Any questions or comments from committee or council members? Okay. All right. Anything else from our guests, from our experts here? Okay, so I would accept a motion to adjourn Committee of the Whole, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Committee of the Whole is adjourned. Motion to adjourn Committee of Legal Affairs. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you to BevCam and everyone who's here tonight. Thank you.